So we've been experimenting with collections, and really the thing about collections is you're going to be grouping together content that could be interesting to people, but someone still has to search for it or, or seek it out. <clears throat> I'm going to show you this other aspect of Google Plus where people congregate on topics that they really care about, and those are the uh, communities. I really like communities. It is, it is okay. Communities are really useful, so let's check these out. Go over to the icon of the menu and then select Communities. Communities are like classic uh, bulletin boards or you know message areas where people can go and look at a specific topic. So let's check out Communities. And it's going to be in a similar concept to collections, but notice this. Here's some recommended communities. We've got here's recommended. You are a member of these communities. Here are the communities you have created. I'm going to say, don't bother creating your own communities. I'll explain why in a moment. You want to join communities. The Google Small Business has over 700,000 people subscribed to it. Health News, nearly 500,000. Crockpot Obsess, 176,000 obsessives. So there's these communities where people on Google Plus and companies join to keep up with the latest about beauty, Google Art Project, etc. So just browsing here, there's 243,000 members of the television community, 171,000 in the running community. So what I'm going to do is, there's join, don't click join yet. I'm going to see, for example, the grilling guide says 150,000 members. I'm going to click on the icon, I'm not going to join yet, I'm going to click the icon, and what that will do is it will show me all of the posts in that community. And basically, this is a captive audience of 150,000 people. So Rowan posted this. He got a couple of plus ones. Ali posted this. He got some plus ones. Uh, Best Food Recipe posted that, a few plus ones. So people that care about a topic are browsing the community here. They're following this topic, this community. And so there's a captive audience of 150,000 members that have chosen to pay attention here. So I want this. I want to speak to these 150,000 members. Join. And so if I click join, some of them say join, some of them say ask to join. I'll explain the difference in a moment. But if you join a community, you will then have the ability to post to the community. Notice the little pencil up here. I don't have the ability to post to a community until I join it. So if I click join, now I'm going to post and I'm going to be targeting those 150,000 people that care about that topic. Communities are created by by people on Google+. Google doesn't own these Google doesn't control them. Google doesn't moderate them. The people themselves do that. So let's say I'm going to jump over to the social media strategy community. I want to check out what's this social media strategy. I need to learn about social media. So I click there. I see a lot of great posts. Great. A lot of great activity. People are commenting and liking and sharing. Great. I want to join. Oh, this one is an ask to join. This one is more exclusive. You have to click Ask to Join, and someone from the community will check you out and vouch for you to let you post to the community. So not all communities are completely public. Some are a little exclusive. And it might benefit you to try to join these exclusive communities to reach an audience that really cares about social media, for example. And so this is one of the big secrets, one of the big things I love about Google+. Plus, Communities. 
I've joined a lot of communities about specific topics, posted stuff to them, and I get lots of plus ones and comments and follows. If I'm only adding to my public home screen and I only have seven followers, I'm not going to get that far. If I'm only adding to collections and I still don't have that many followers of the collections, I'm not reaching that many. But if I join communities with 700,000, I could be reaching a lot of an audience. And we don't need to have a connection. I don't need to be connected with those 700 people, 700,000 people. Those 700,000 people see what I've posted and may like it or plus one it, <coughs> comment, reply, follow, etc. And I also have the ability to search at the top. I want to search for the community about... I want to search a keyword of a community. I'm not finding exactly what I'm looking for, so I'm going to search for cookies. I'm going to search cookies. Communities of cookies. Cake, sweets, and biscuits. Cake divas. Tough cookie mommy. Cookie connection. Okay, I'm seeing these other communities here that I could join. But here's the thing about joining communities. I recommend joining communities with at least 1,000 members. Tough Cookie Mommy is close. I might join it. But I'm going to say, if you're joining a, a community with 70 followers, well again, you have such a small target audience then. So I recommend about 1,000 followers, 1,000 members, or more. Because it's about numbers. The more people that see your posts, the more you could possibly then get followers, replies, etc. When I talk about social media, I always then liken it to the real media. How many of you visit your mailbox um, and you get that Bed Bath & Beyond coupon? Everyone gets it. How many of you use that Bed Bath & Beyond coupon? So let's say everyone here got it, but only six of us used it. Two of us used it. Bed Bath & Beyond still had to pay someone to think of what to write on it, someone to design it, someone to print it, someone to deliver it. So you got that coupon. My mom got the coupon. I threw it away, but my mom used it. So Bed Bath & Beyond got some return on investment uh, from my mom, but not from me. I threw it away. But they still spent $10,000 to get it to me, whereas my mom th used it and I threw it away. I can reach 600 people, 1,000 people, 100,000 people for free. My return on investment could be higher because I'm not paying to print that and ship it and pass it around on everyone's windshield and such. I'm targeting people that care about something. My return on investment investment could be higher. That's why you want to join communities with at least a thousand members. I'm seeing Cake Divas. It's got 1,100. Great. Join. Not so fast. You want to look at the community. You want to read into it. You want to vouch for it. Because just because it has a thousand people doesn't mean people are actually commenting, being on topic, caring, replying. I'm going to check this one out. Cake Divas. So this one's got one plus one. This one's got one plus one. This one's got two. This one's got eleven. This one's got five and two. So it might have five thousand members, but then everyone's spamming and no one's really engaging for real. I wouldn't join it just because it had five thousand. I would join a community that had a good amount of people, a thousand or more, and that people are actually active. And remember, the plus one is the lowest level of interaction. I can click plus one and move on and move on and see so many things and forget about it. But I'm going to look and I'm going to see, are there people commenting? I don't see any comments yet. Are people sharing? Very few shares. Almost no comments. I don't know. I might not join this. People might not really care. There's a <coughs> comment right there. Almost everything else doesn't have any comments. The higher levels are the comments and the shares. These are very disposable. Hmm. 
So I would search communities for keywords and concepts, check that they've got at least a thousand, and then browse the community to see that there's activity. I don't want to join a ghost town community of 5,000 people. I want to join communities that have activity. That people are talking with each other, not at, not just at each other. Interaction. We want interaction always, the social, in social media. So this is the big secret. It works. When, when I do this for clients, I can post the same thing or similar thing to Twitter, Google+, and uh, Facebook. And oftentimes, the Google Plus version of it gets more activity because I'm targeting it to the right group. When we get to Facebook, we'll talk about the pros and cons of Facebook, and we'll talk about the pros and cons of Twitter and their nuances and such. But one of the best, the biggest advice, the best advice that I can give you is use Google Plus communities. People that care about something are there to be found. You just have to find the right community. You can join as many as you want. The thing is, though, another thing, you have to also read the rules of the community. Because you might join five communities and you posted the exact same thing on all five of them, one of them is probably going to kick you out. Because these are real people creating these accounts, these communities, not Google+, not some algorithm, real people. Um, there's moderators here. Some of these that I've noticed, their name says moderator on it, or owner, or whatever. Real people that care about the community are keeping it in line. Depending on the community, if you have some kind of computation like between two question community, you have a similar, but how you gonna do some kind of a get trouble with it? If you have something similarity in a product that product or service that you're selling, you join the community, it's pretty much similar to what you're interested in and targeting the customer, mm. how are you gonna be kick somebody out? It depends on the people that run the community. There might be a rule here. Um, the community has this little info button. You see, it's kind of hidden. They, it used to be more obvious. But now you want to check the info of the community because here's the rules. If they say, this is a discussion-oriented community, please no self-promotion. Mm. And I post an ad for my wellness site. I could be, my post could be deleted, best case scenario. Worst case scenario, I get kicked out. And now I have no more access to those 200,000 people. So read the rules of the community. It's not so obvious anymore, unfortunately, but it used to be right here at the very top right. Now what you want to do is check the rules of the community. Because it's happened to me. I, I thought, you know, I've followed the rules and such. But there, unfortunately, sometimes jerks run these communities. And there's one jerk on this one community that I really liked that I didn't post what he liked enough times, and he kicked me out. And there's no one I can cry to. I have cried to the Google Plus bigwigs, and they say, sorry, we don't run that. The people themselves run it. You self-police each other. So if you get kicked out of this community, you lost 236,000 potential people to see it. So always read the rules. <clears throat> What else? Positivity is contagious. Please do not use negative language towards others in any post. Share your experience and tips, but please leave any diagnoses to the professionals, etc. That's when I joined. It says uh, one post per hour, no duplicate post. One post per hour. There you go. You can't overpost on that community, so always read the rules. Most of these communities also have topics. Here's the Living Plus community, and at the moment, it's all posts, all topics. But this one has nutrition, fitness, mindfulness, balance, etc. So, if I have a great recipe, and I put it into the wrong place, challenges or something, I don't know, that could be removed it could be ignored. I don't know. It depends on the community. What I'm getting at is if you're going to post content to a community, think about how it fits into the topic of the community also. 
oftentimes a community has topics, you know, sections. Post your content in the right section. Um, depending on the community. I posted something in a community, I put it in the wrong place, the moderator said, hey, nice post, but please put it in the right place, and he moved it to the right place. If it was a mean moderator, he would have said, off topic, delete it. But it depends on who runs the community. Could be strict. So how do you actually post that? You should see a little pencil on the bottom right corner. When you join the community, you'll see a pencil. Oh. And also, if you have a business name, I can't really say. You have to read the rules. But it's, it's perfectly fine for a business place, a business page, to join a community, as long as it's on topic. You could be a business page and you do post interesting things to the community, but you're not posting, check out my coupon, buy my product. You're posting stuff that would be relevant to the community and you're not doing the hard sell. Simply by being active in the community, getting your name in that community, some people will say, oh, what is this wellness business about? and then click your profile and maybe follow you and maybe click your website. So it's not always about the hard sell. And you definitely need to read the rules of the community because some will be very strict even about a soft sell. They'll say never promote yourself. So then it might not even be it might not even behoove you to join such a strict community. So it really depends on the community. There is the opposite limit as well. A minimum of a thousand is a good starting point. If it's got, you know, 800, maybe join it. But the opposite is also true. If it has nearly a million members, you could be drowned out. With so many members posting so much stuff, your stuff is just going to zoom by everyone. That's the other opposite of it, too. I can't exactly say what's too much. It really depends, but I think getting in the million range might be too much. There's not so many that have that many. Gaming is one of them. There's one of them about funny jokes. That's got a million. There's one about Android that does have a million. So the ones that have a lot, like 800, 700,000, those might be too big, and your content might not be as visible as it could be. Now, I'm breaking my own rule because I am members. I am a member of two or three communities of more than a million, and it still works to post something, and I get activity. But you just be aware that you could be drowned out from the other people as well. So for example, I'm searching Android, because I also develop apps and so forth, Android apps. And uh, it's useful to post. Well, they're up to 1.4 million now. Um, I do post to Android community, and I do get a lot of plus ones and comments and follows and such. Um, I, I believe I'm a member of all of those. And uh, they're free to join. These ones are just joined. They're not asked to join. So, yeah, find your audience, communities. Google Plus at the moment is really, really pushing collections, which will be valuable, but Communities have already been established since the beginning of Google Plus five years ago, four years ago. Collections are pretty new. They're like less than a year old. So I would say still for the moment, go with communities, play with collections, and they might take off eventually or they might not. But post content, relevant content, to an audience that cares, and that's how you're going to get followers. And you're going to mix in the fun stuff, the, the irreverent stuff, with the selling and the you know salesmanship and all of that and as you use more social media you will see that many concepts bleed throughout all the networks when we get to Twitter we're going to talk about very similar concepts about setting up the profile tweeting to nobody getting followers and we'll see the nuances of Twitter on how to get followers hashtags and all of that but the same concept permeates all the networks. Post interesting things. Post things that people care about. Pictures, text, video, links, and target it. 
on Google Plus, communities are the best way to target. When we get to Twitter, we'll see hashtags. When we get to Facebook, we'll see boosted posts. Pinterest has its own thing, and Snapchat, etc., etc. But all the networks are about content. We'll talk about one more thing and then we'll enter lab time in a moment. Um, I'm just going to go to any community here, um, Android, for example. Remember, the social of social media. Um, you, can run, you can run for your business social media in two ways, as a dialogue and as a monologue. What does a monologue mean? single voice, one person talking. Dialogue. What's a dialogue? Two people. two people. Two or more people. So running your social media as a monologue is that you're posting stuff on social media and you never reply, you never follow up, you never give comments. It's all about me. Monologue. I would recommend, and what I do for my clients, is the dialogue. We post something and we reply. We reach out to to brand new people and start a conversation, a dialogue. That, I believe, is more effective in the long term than a monologue. You are creating uh, an entity that people would care to follow and to interact with instead of simply monologue that your stuff just goes out to the world, you never reply, I don't have incentive to follow you, you're not fun, so dialogue. And what I'm getting at is, I'm going to join this Android community, which gives me the ability to comment into the community, specifically the posts of the people that have commented in that community. When this wakes up, it'll let me, it'll let me reply to anyone that has posted anything. This is taking forever, but it will let me... There it is. It will let me post to the community and to reach that audience, but it will also let me comment directly to new one right here. I can click comment, and my comment is going to be added to his post. So he's going to get a notification that said, Victor's Bakery replied to you. At the top right corner, we have a little bell. Mine is empty. Does anyone have a number there? That notification bell tells you someone has followed you, someone has replied to you, someone has shared something with you. Just like on Facebook when you see those red numbers at the top right. Just like on Twitter when we'll see those notifications. They all have notifications. Question? Yeah, like if you're on Gmail, would it also let you know that on Gmail if you have notifications? It would, but it would only let you know your notifications of your personal account because it's your personal Gmail. So I don't have any notifications at the moment, but let's say I commented a new one's post here. Let's see, what did he write? I recently noticed that I can't side load apps, cancel, what can be the reason? I don't know, we don't comment. I'll say, have you tried restarting it? If I post that, new one will get a notification that says, Victor's Bakery replied to you, starting the dialogue. The point of this is then, let's say I did this more legitimately and I'm replying to someone's cookie recipe. I'm a bakery after all. I reply to their cookie recipe and I say, great recipe. Our version that we learned from, from our grandma is that we use uh, an extra ounce of butter. So I'm starting that dialogue and that person that posted that recipe could then reply to me, follow me, click my link, Basically, I've made them aware that I exist. These one million people don't know I exist yet. So right there, new one got a notification on his bell. He may or may not, he posted this four minutes ago, so he may reply to me, he may follow me, he, he can plus one comments too. All of this effort is in is in the service of getting followers, replying to people, simply plus wanting it to show, you know, to show approval, sharing it. Why 
I have a question regarding about the host or comment. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend it how much you host or comment? Because sometimes you see somebody else who post a comment is too noisy because too much or something like that. I mean, then you have to start to mute somebody else's account because too much, you know, going on for every day for so many months. Well, commenting over and over on one post, I would definitely avoid. Um, commenting on, let's say, seven people here, I think that's okay because in Google Plus, the people that are connected to this post will see your comment more directly. So Ahmed right here, Ahmad would here will would see it, but not necessarily Ryan. We're in the same community, but if I reply to Ahmad here, Ryan wouldn't see it. So it's okay that I comment to all of them. If I do the post 10 times here, then that could get annoying to all of the people of the community. But I think it's okay within reason to reply to everyone here because these particular people are going to get the notification. Right here, um, right here, Droid Tweaker. If I post here, Droid would get the notification as well as Jason because they're connected to this one post, not me over here. Oh, okay, so just it's not too much. Mm -hmm. You will get the notifications if someone probably slides in the again. Yes, that's that's what I was saying. That as you continue the conversation of this post, you would get notifications. Everyone connected to this post would be would be up on the notifications. Okay. Yeah, so if it's overwhelming, don't comment on seven posts. <laughs> if there is one, conversation. if there is one of these that has seventy comments and you comment, yes, you are you are going to be part of that, and you're going to start getting notifications. John replied. Janet replied. Bill replied. That's why I my Facebook. <laughs> so there's the opposite of that, and then there's always the ability to mute a post if you don't want to be if you don't want to pay attention anymore to what you commented, like this one over here that I saw had a lot of that's this one had six. Maybe this is a hot topic, and I don't want to. I don't want to read it anymore. You should be able to click on the time of a post, you know, the buttons, and you got mute. It's not that you deleted the post or anything. It's that you stopped paying attention to it. Because this one seems to have a lot of activity. Six comments, 146 votes, activity, so forth. So then you should get the notification. You'll stop getting the notifications with mute. Yes. <coughs> So there's still plenty that we can talk about. As I said, I could teach a whole class just on one social network. We're getting at the end of our day, so I want to do something here, and then we'll go into lab time. Let's do this. On the top right corner, click on your icon, and click Sign Out. Because when you go home, you're excited today. When you go home and you try to do this, you're going to be lost. How do I get back to it? Let me address that issue. Sign Out, close your web browser, and open a different web browser. I was in Firefox, I'm going to switch to Chrome. If you were in Safari, go to some other browser, Internet Explorer, Opera, whatever. Log out, sign out, and go to another browser to show you how to get back to what we were doing because there's, you're going to need to switch from your personal to your business. Every time you log in, it will automatically take you to your personal and you're going to be posting the wrong thing in the wrong place. So let me show you this to avoid this issue. Go to any other web browser. What was that address I said earlier about getting into Google Plus? Plus.google.com. Plus Actually, any Google property will take you to it, Gmail, whatever. But I often go it this way. This will take me directly to Google Plus. Plus. If you go into Gmail first, then you can go to Google Plus. But if you go to plus.google.com, it goes directly to Google Plus first. Let's try it this way. Plus.google.com. Sign in. Well, it says let's go. It's you know really pushing collections. Great. Click sign in, top right. Sign in with that email 
and password that you used earlier today. Okay, so I've signed in at the top right corner. It's my icon. You probably don't have your picture there. You can set it in the profile. But this is my personal profile. And I want my personal profile. I want my business page. So if you click on your icon, you should see then your page. Here's the pages of the companies I manage. Here's Victor's Bakery. So as soon as you log into Google+, Plus, remember to switch to your business page. You're not going to need you to use your personal profile for anything if you don't want. You don't need to put your high school and connect your friends and use the personal. You don't need to do that. Because you then are going to switch over to the page. Page is for businesses and brands. Profile is for personal. Profile, page. You're going to be in the page. And now when you select page, that should take you back. If it says again, new Google, yes, go ahead, let's go. And then you'll be back where we were. Collections, communities, home. There's what I've posted so far. If I go back to communities, here's the ones I've joined. These are the ones I'm a member of. There's been one new post since I last visited. There's been 99 new posts since I last visited there. Activity. Oh, and look at this. At the top right corner, I've got a notification. I didn't plan this. Someone, someone connected with me for some reason. Hopefully it's safe for work, so I'm going to click it. Sri Ragang, Anuan, Teresa commented on. So here's the thing. I commented on a post. Other people further commented on it. So I'm getting this notification. I can click on it to read it. And I'm seeing here people people haven't people didn't address me directly, but I'm part of the conversation because I commented on a post. It could be good or bad. It could be good if it's on topic. Here obviously I said something pretty flippant. They're ignoring me. But I still get the notification. I'm part of the conversation. If I had commented on someone's cookie recipe, like I said. I would be part of the conversation. Perhaps someone would then reply to me, plus one my content, follow me, etc. But as we talk, when we get to Twitter and Facebook and such, this is part of it. Interacting with people. Yes, talking to strangers. Because everyone in your life at one point was a stranger. All your friends at least. They were strangers. And now you've got friends, connections. You're going to make friends and connections and customers and followers on social media as well, interacting with strangers that care about the topics that you care about. And usually 98% of the time, it's a great interaction. If you're positive, you'll get positivity. If you're negative, you might get negativity. If you're on topic, you'll get on topic replies and content and friends and followers customers. And so the icon at the top right is for you to switch between profiles. Notice I manage more than one account. I can easily switch between accounts or back to my personal on the top right corner. And uh, I can create as many as I want and so forth. There's still a lot that we can talk about Google+, Plus, but we're getting to the end of the day. Any general questions about everything we've talked about? So we've created an account, we've created a business page. I've given you a few advice here and there. The big one is communities and collections. Um, this class, um, most of my classes are not based upon uh, 
uh, grades and homework and, and all of that. You don't get a certificate at the end. You get out of it what you need. Did you learn what you needed? Um, did, you, did you gain information and such? So there's no homework in anything, but I'm going to say, use Google Plus from now, from now until next time. Make a mistake. Write down a question. Ask a question next time. Use it, because if you don't use it, you lose it. Where was that button? How do I join a community? Use it. So we're going to wrap up at this point, and, when we, and we'll have a little lab time until 9.30. And then when we come back next time, we'll learn the next network, Twitter. And we'll see that some of the concepts we talked about here will also apply on Twitter, and vice versa. So that's it. Let's have some lab time. Thank you for coming.